Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Yeah, for sure, Jude, join the movement. Is it the duty of our National Assembly to make laws to compensate criminality and punish those who abide by the rules? Then one might be tempted to ask if ours is a National Assembly or Assembly of non-nationals. These questions became pertinent as when one hears that the National Assembly is proposing a bill to grant amnesty to terrorists and the House of Rep members are buying foreign vehicles in opposition to Nigerian made. Are these members oblivious of the prevailing situation in Nigeria? In a country where people can hardly feed with one dollar, that's 362 naira a day, the members of our House of Representatives are going to spend about 5 billion naira buying 400 pieces of 2020 model Toyota Camry at the cost of almost 40 million naira per car. Hmm. We are informed that the members even rejected the locally manufactured innocent vehicles. It is obvious we are there to serve them and they are not to serve us. Even the members representing Innocent constituency couldn't insist that their own vehicles be bought from Innocent Moto. So much for Esprit de Chop. So money meant to develop and enhance our economy, we take flight to foreign land to buy cars. Yet tomorrow we'll borrow that same money with interest from the same foreign countries to buy more cars and consume more foreign goods. Don't forget we have closed our land borders to enable us grow our local industry. Who be fool? On their part, at the Senate, a bill sponsored by Senator Ibrahim Gedem, a former governor of Yobe State, now a senator, is proposing not just amnesty for Boko Haram, repentant Boko Haram members, but to send them abroad for studies. Yet we say we don't compensate criminality here as we deal with them decisively, like government will always say. Hmm? The bill which will create a national agency for education, rehabilitation, de-radicalization and integration of repentant insurgents in Nigeria will get its funding from the Universal Basic Education Commission, that's UBEC, and the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, that's State Fund. With such laws, Boko Haram members will soon begin to scream members, as all you need to do to get rehabilitated and be given foreign scholarship will be to enroll as a member of Boko Haram, repent after one or two months, and boom, you're on your way abroad for studies. Yet, no scholarship for the victim or the students with the highest score in WAIC or JAM. Why won't we be highly spiritual instead of innovative or creative? I don't know whether to laugh or cry. What do we tell the children of the victim who for no fault of theirs have found themselves in overcrowded, internally displaced people's camp because their parents were killed by Boko Haram members? And that the same state that cannot guarantee their parents' safety is busy compensating the killers of their parents with foreign education. Yet we expect such kids not to take up arms against the state tomorrow. We are all a bunch of jokers. What will you tell the parents of Leah Shaibu, or the mother of the abducted school guests in Dapchi, or those from Chibok, majority of whom are still in captivity today, or the parents of the boys slaughtered in their sleep in the secondary school in Buniyadi, that why the states that couldn't bring the killers of their ward and captors of their daughters to book, those arrested by the state are being compensated with salaries and foreign education. Yet a senator sponsored this bill. Make with a fear God though. If we are rehabilitating and educating and reintegrating the terrorists, what happened to the victims who are increasing in their numbers by the day? Have they been rehabilitated? Have they been no need rehabilitation? How do we dance on the graves of our servicemen and women who have died, some carelessly, in the fight of te against terrorism with such an idea and hope to prosper as a nation or find peace with our conscience and maker? With such ideas, without knowing it, we are gradually building an army of dissidents who will be emboldened to take up arms against the state in no distance time. 
I would therefore advocate that if our lawmakers don't want Nigerians to see them as strangers, that's assembly of non-nationals, they should not only jettison this ostentatious lifestyle that further fleeces the country, but strive to make laws that would promote unity, equity, welfare, peace, and rehabilitation of all Nigerians, irrespective of tribe or tongue, because we all need rehabilitation. The average Nigerian should also be aware that the country belongs to all of us and the time to be collectively and genuinely interested in the affairs of the executive, legislature, and judiciary is now. As a little fire you live today can leave you without a little in the near future. A word said in half goes into the wise and becomes a whole. I don't talk my own. That's the wise. Two things I like about what you've talked about, that we all need rehabilitation. I heard you know that. I saw you know that. Look, and that what about the victims? It's so preposterous. How do you begin to sponsor criminals for foreign education? Yes. Soldiers have died needlessly. Their families are in the lurch, as it were. No compensation for them, no welfare for them. And then you turn around to say you're sponsoring criminals, you know, foreign education for them. Then why am I law abiding? Why should I be law abiding? And then look at these jokers at the National Assembly. You want to buy a car, 4 million naira, 40 million. 40 million. 2020 Cameroon, in, in a country where 98 million people are living in extreme poverty, imagine if we broke down that 40 million per senator or per lawmaker into how many families? Mm -hmm. How many startups can we have from 40 million naira? I mean, you, you, said, you, said, just... you said a lot, but I, what, where, I, where I want to take oh it from God. is what Libros was basically Gosh. saying, that the time for us to hold them accountable, time to be interested in what they're doing is now. The fact that we can't keep lots of things on the uh, front burner doesn't make me forget that they were doing a 37 billion naira renovation, or the yes. dollar, am yes. I losing sight, yeah. of the, house, the same House of Assembly. So yes. it's like they're pushing all the wrong buttons. So clearly they're not there to serve us. We need to be able to say, look, all these bills, which one has worked in our favor? You have the hate speech bill, which we, <laughs> we all shouted against. You have the rehabilitation the bill. Billion, you know, yes, you have all yes. kinds of crazy things nah, coming out. You one. have the Camry, you know, push. 20, 20, so so what is it that you're really doing that we can say, oh, these people are fighting for us? <laughs> I even want to take it from something that you said about what they are going to breed. I mean, in the world of okay. comics, for okay. example, they are called vigilantes. And eventually they are going to build vigilantes who will be determined to bring these people to justice, right? And I like the fact that in the world community today, you see a lot of leaders who are called to justice for all the horrors, because this is... War this, crimes. Yeah, yeah, these are war crimes to humanity. You cannot send murderous, I'm sorry to use the word to... to school you, abroad. To school abroad. Like, like you said, yeah, victims, when victims when people who there. have gone to school with no provision, you have not provided. <sighs> Yes. They've gone to school. They have scholarships. They can't. I know somebody, for example, who is in the UK, who was supposed to get a scholarship from the government, right? Mm -hmm. And is presently begging around for people to pay the school fees because the scholarship never came. Never, never came, came. Yeah. yes. Um, yeah, there's so many in Scotland yeah, like that. Nigerians yeah. them. And, and now state. you want to sponsor yes. criminals? I'm sure it's the, it's the scholarship that Buhari stopped, uh, that Jonathan told to go ahead uh, for some students who it turned out that a huge majority of them just turned out to be Igbos. And so when, this when Buhari came to power, yes. he said, why, why is it that you have a scholarship scheme for 40 people? They're all Igbos. And he said, we have to redo it in national character. But meanwhile, oh, it was actually joking. done. I no, meanwhile, it was that. actually done as an open, let's yes, call it an open tender based. first. Yeah. And then people came forward. I'm sure so some people came from Katsina as well. It. Yes. They didn't get the scores. And then all of a sudden, these guys have gotten oh, it. Instead of you to just let happened. it. It was a very funny thing. Is they are in, they've already been enrolled to and this school. They've already school. been enrolled. They've signed legal documents. And now you have people's children owing close to thirty-four thousand pounds for school fees. Yes. With no means of paying them. Yeah. No. Stranded in, yes. in, Scotland. Stranded in another yes. country. Because yeah. people have even argued. But, sorry, you can but, but what I was going to say, which is a bit of what Jide has said, is that there's a very, very strange madness that's coming from a clique of people that have come into power with Buhari. It's a very strange thing. And the, this country hasn't seen this level of madness before where things are just happening and it's like it can be true like 
this can't be true that terrorists can are going to really go abroad to this? school. Yes. yes. It, we've never seen this sort but of thing But it's like they don't, they don't seem to care what we it say. They don't want to go to something. Yeah. Something has gone very, very wrong with a set of people that came with him. And that's why you find that, that I can tell you authoritatively that everywhere now, go, the, nowhere is safe again. And the only way we can correct this thing that's is to go I'm back sure. to our elections and our electoral processes mm. to ensure that you know, you're able to vote in the right people. If until you do that, these people are just I think we should be, be more recycling. interested now in those who are in the yes. legislature. No more just everybody, focusing on president. Everybody. Does that everybody. legislature have the power everybody. to everybody. make How do we vote, in, make? Uh, do we vote in the right people? No, we, we need to put to ourselves forward to be in the legislature. We, yeah, yeah, exactly. We put ourselves yeah. forward to be in the we legislature. We have to be very intentional yeah. about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, persistent. Yeah. Half a word is enough for the wise. Time to add your words to us to make us wiser. On what's the value of the Nigerian life, Baba Tunde or Debe Yi says the advocacy intro is well articulated and very informative. However, I disagree with the general consensus as repeated by the panelists that the Nigerian life means nothing. In my own candid opinion, the value of the Nigerian life means less than nothing. And the unfortunate thing is, if things continue to go on like this, it's only going to get worse. And the climax of it is going to be a hyper aggra aggravation of every misdemeanor we experience today in Nigeria, from arm robbery to wanton killing by terrorists and the ruthless mayhem by the headsmen, to say the least. Sadly, the millions of gullible people who have been cultivated as slaves through hunger, ignorance, or at least a dysfunctional education who cannot be bothered by reason to hold their leaders accountable, will ultimately be compelled by the aggravated hunger and wanton suffering to avenge their mistreatment of the ruling class. This is called the revenge of the poor. Wow, what a bleak prognosis, Baba Tunde. Hope you are not among those who cannot be bothered to hold their leaders accountable, though, because I, I want you to you know, hold them accountable. Also, on the value of the Nigerian life, Idowu Odunayo Martin says, nobody will give us anything on the platter of gold. To get something, we have to fight for it. If Nigerians are not ready to fight for a better country, then we don't deserve it. What's the essence of life spent in poverty and insecurity? Thank you for your contribution. Food for thought, anyway. Do keep your comments coming on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up on previous broadcasts, go to our website, plus TVAfrica.com, forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus TV Africa. After the break, Ekene says, I will live and not die. Maybe that's not from our church. Sir. How about Ekene? You don't reach that point. <laughs> you don't reach your Libby. After the break, I'll tell you more. <laughs>